I'm James Schillinglaw for Virtual Vacation Events, The New Age of Luxury. And today we have a, a great panel of luxury, all-inclusive resort executives who, and this is a category that really has only formed in the last, I don't know, decade, maybe a little more than that. But, you know, we used to think of luxury, uh, we used to think of inclusives, uh, inclusive resorts as maybe not luxury. But boy, things have changed. Uh, and each of uh, our panelists has a luxury product that is uh, one that can be considered for luxury travelers. And I think a lot of you out there, uh, travel advisors out there, our, our, our viewers know that. But what we're here today to really is sort of blow the lid off the kind of myth that inclusive, all inclusive doesn't mean luxury. And we have a great panel, as I said, and I'm going to start from the top and introduce you, and then we're going to go straight into the questions. Uh, we have, uh, just raise your hand as, as, as I, I, I mentioned you, uh, Howard Tannenbaum, who's the Senior Vice President of Sales for Playa Hotels and Resorts, which you may know as Hy Hyatt Ziva and Zalera. Uh, we have uh, the ever popular Gary Sadler, uh, who is the uh, Sandals and Beaches Resorts. Uh, he is the uh, head of sales all over for Unique Vacations, which is the uh, sales representative. Uh, we have Kathy Halpern, uh, who's the head of marketing, I believe, uh, for all, all of Palace Resorts and LeBlanc Spa Resorts, which actually is one of their luxury products. And finally, last but not least, we have John Long, who's vice president of sales and marketing for Iberostar, which also has obviously luxury, all-inclusive resorts. Now, let's get right into the questions. And, uh, you know, as I said, a couple of decades ago, all-inclusive vacations meant resorts, <coughs> including accommodations, dining activities, and maybe drinks too. It was pretty basic. Uh, so, but it is, what has changed? What has changed now that we have all-inclusive resorts offering large suites, gourmet cuisine, almost everything included, maybe spa? How have we gotten to this point with a luxury all-inclusives? And I'll, I'll start with you, Kathy. Sure. Thanks, James. Um, I truly believe, having been in the business a very long time, so I'm somewhat dating myself, that the evolution of luxury within all-inclusive is really dictated by consumers and the desires that consumers have when booking a vacation, especially now as we're coming out of a pandemic, still in it, but coming out of it. I do believe that luxury really means a lot to clients that travel. And the reason is very, very clear. We've been sitting at home for a very long time dreaming about vacations. And now really the bar has been raised in terms of the offerings. Mm -hmm. And that is an evolution that as a hotelier, we've had to meet the trends and make sure that we live up to those expectations. Absolutely. And we're going to talk specifically a little later about what you offer. But Gary, you know, you, Sandals, I remember going to Sandals and we didn't talk about luxury that much. And then all of a sudden uh, you're, you're, your late uh, owner and founder, uh, Gordon Butch Stewart, wonderful guy, great, great visionary, decided he's going to go luxury. And all of a sudden you were luxury included. Uh, well, how, did, how did that transition work? Well, the trend, first of all, James, thank you very much for the opportunity. And, you know, we love talking to travel advisors all over. So thank you very much. And thank you for that commitment um, to the industry. You know, in our part of the world, the business of all inclusive and um, and that transition to luxury include really stemmed from the fact that you had many people. Once we were the leaders in the business um, at the at the initial outset some forty years ago, you started to see more and more companies coming into the all inclusive um, sector, and they came into the all inclusive sector, and then you realized that you know the the other hotels were offering not necessarily all the features and amenities that Sandals and Beaches Resorts was offering, such as, you know, butler service, such as spa services, such as, you know, five-star global gourmet dining. So then you had to make this transition as to what is an all-inclusive and what is a luxury um, all-inclusive, luxury-included vacation. And that is pretty much where our, our transition took place because we had to find a way to separate um, ourselves from other all-inclusive. So I'm, no, I'm, no, absolutely. And then, of course, all the other all inclusives had to do that and so call themselves ultra. It, it, it just it, it's kind of been a snowball effect in a way because you've raised the bar. Everyone has raised the bar here, uh, which is amazing. And I want to talk to you, Howard, about the same thing. Uh, you know what, what? You know, when you entered the market and, and you entered the you, you your company had all inclusives, but then you aligned with Hyatt with the Hyatt Zeven Zalera and you had to up the game even more. Right. Well, interesting. And first of all, let me say thanks, James, to you and, and, and to everybody on the panel uh, for allowing us to participate. And a special thanks to all the travel advisors out there. 
Uh, no secret, we built our business on the trade and tr with the trade press, and uh, it's a huge part of our success and will be so uh, long into the future. As far as your question goes, yeah, uh, in 2013, 2013, 14, uh, we partnered with Hyatt and we were the first all-inclusive company to go with a major brand and be committed to develop a new kind of all-inclusive, uh, what we called at the time the evolution of all-inclusive, because prior to that point in time, there's great product out there. But we also thought that there was a better way forward. So working with Hyatt, we had, you know, really some key attributes we were looking to do, of course, having the best location within a destination and incredible service. And you mentioned inspired dining concepts and premium beverages and spa and fitness, world-class wellness centers. These were things that were going to be tenants of our brand moving forward. And in addition to that, working with the big brands, it really upped our game, not only in the front of the house, but in the back of the house. You think about uh, hotel acumen and operational excellence, everything from housekeeping to room service, health, life and safety systems, billing systems, all of those things really came up a notch as we elevated and worked with our brand partners. And then I would say equally important, and this is really the key for our success or has been so far, is we started benchmarking ourselves against the very best in the business. You know, Hyatt has the Park Hyatt brands and the Grand Hyatt resorts and conference centers. And we started to use those, what they call high SAT survey scores and benchmark ourselves against the best in their systems. And we found out right away what we did well, but we also found out where we had opportunities and boy, did we leverage that information. And today I'm proud to tell you that our Ziva Zalara Resorts with Hyatt always rank in the top five of their comp set, what we call the comp bucket of high-end resort hotels at Hyatt. So that's really been the evolution for us has been working together with our brand partners. No, that's great. And I and, and it, it is it is, you know, raising the bar again, uh, comparison to luxury hotels, like you said, you know, you're 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 putting on yourselves on par with Park Hyatt and things like that. And John, uh, you know, in your case, you have kind of uh, you have resorts with differentiated brands where your highest level, uh, you know, in fact, we were just there uh, it, it, I and there was nothing there that I said, this is a luxury resort. There's no question about it. Talk about how you uh, evolved Iberostar uh, to get to that highest level, your, your grand, that category. Absolutely. Then again, James, thanks and everyone for uh, getting us uh, to all together here to be able to talk about something so important, which is making sure travel advisors know that uh, we haven't sacrificed anything from a luxury standpoint because of the situation that we're all in. And one of the uh, evolutions for us really was about 11 years ago, we decided that, you know, all of us had families and everything. And we said, if we wanted to do luxury, maybe we could do it, but not thinking about kids and thinking about adults only. So we took a different route and we went with the adults only round and said, okay, so we need to have a, a luxury, true luxury product. So we have to have a steakhouse in our resort, like what someone would experience in New York city. And we have to include everything in that steakhouse, Kobe beef, uh, you know, the fine cuts of meat. We need to have the broilers like they have it, um, um, you know, where they sear the meat at 1800 degrees and, and all this and, and, and fresh lobster and fresh seafood and no surcharges, all of that included. And, you know, butler service and uh, pillow menus. And, and it, you know, we just went over the top when it came to the, the, the adult and sp to the idea of, we, you know, we've had these great customers that have, been staying with Iberostar for generations and, you know, they have children and everything, but they want to get away from those kids sometimes and celebrate a special occasion or do a, a you know, vow renewal or whatever it is, or just go and have a golf trip with friends. And so we decided to go the route of luxury for adults. And it's really worked very, very well for us. And we've listened to the travel advisors because we know we've, we've been thinking about how oh, maybe we need to make some of these grands and make them for families or incorporate times if you know have a family area within the resort and we said and the travel advisor said no absolutely not back, yeah well back. in fact in fact it's, if you want family you can put them in, in your other resorts because absolutely uh, often they're uh next to each other so that's uh, yes kind of that is i appreciate you saying that yeah absolutely that we have the coral level which is where i am right now in mexico and you know i'm i was actually right before we started i was 
looking at our new room service menu. And again, it was just like New York strip steak with, uh, with, you know, eggs, Benedict, eggs, Benedict, if I wanted to have that for breakfast right now. And again, no surcharge and everything's included. So I think, you know, when you talk about luxury, it's all about the dining and the wines and the, and the spirits and everything else. So we've, um, we really had some, a lot of success with that. And the advisors have told us that we've really upped our game. So no, no, that's been absolutely. That. And I've, I've been lucky enough to see a couple of resorts and, and Gary, I mean, uh, what is included now just to sort of delineate for travel advisors, most of whom may know, obviously know sandals, but what I should say, what isn't included because pretty much everything is right. Everything is included. We try to make it absolutely perfect for the customer and, we have some unique things that some other resorts um, just not able to offer at this time. For example, if you stay at Sandals Royal Bahamian in one of the top suites, there's a Rolls Royce transfer. Uh, it's not just restaurants. It's 21 different restaurants in Turks and Caicos, 22 different um, dining choices um, in Ocherias. It's not, in, if you're staying in Montego Bay, Jamaica, in any of, this, any of the concierge rooms or higher, we have a BMW transfer, a private car transfer for every single couple um, at that resort. Water sports, every single water sport is included, including instructions. So, you know, tips, taxes, all that you would need on a vacation. In fact, oftentimes we say to people, you really don't need to take your wallet when you're coming to a Sandals or Beaches resort because everything is so included in a way that it is there in absolute abundance. And that is kind of what we did to make a difference. Because I mean, again, you know, the competition is there. The competition exists from all hotels. I mean, right throughout the region, not just um, the Caribbean, but right throughout the region um, as well. We find great competition, but we always try to be ahead of the game with everybody else. And that is why we started with the services of the Guild of Professional English Butlers. Again, included in the package, just to be sure that we're doing different things to make a big difference. And of course, drinks are included. Of course, yes. Well, that's the biggest thing. Well, the only thing I think that isn't included is spa treatment, right? No, the spa services are not included. But if you want to go and utilize the spa, um, then yes, that is included. There is no charge. There has never been an upcharge at any of the sandals resorts. But if you're physically going to be using a service such as a massage, manicure, pedicure, et cetera, yeah, th then that would be at an additional cost. Okay, let's go to Howard. Uh, what, what is included at uh, Hyatt Ziv and Zolera? Uh, is it everything uh, and what isn't? <laughs> Uh, pretty much at all of our resort brands, not only the Hyatt Ziva Zolaris, but our Hilton All Inclusives, Panama Jacks, you know, pretty much you get what you want. Uh, it's hard pressed to say what you wouldn't get. Uh, everybody gets room service. Uh, we all include, I think today, uh, gratuities. Uh, we're all including premium, premium spirits and uh, specialty coffees and teas and all the things that would be extra at an a la carte resort or even some other types of vacation concepts are really, uh, it's, it's all wrapped in. We have wonderful a la carte restaurants, uh, all included, of course, and we say whatever flavor you savor. So if you want farm to table, uh, more locally grown and sourced, and you want to experience and immerse in the culture and the flavors of the region, you could do that in our resorts. But then of course, uh, uh, Gary or uh, John mentioned there's steakhouses and there's you know, always the Chinese and Asian and Japanese and teppanyaki and you, uh, Italian and French. So pretty much whatever somebody wants, a lot of it's dining. Uh, but then the other piece, and I think that this is really critical, is the space. You know, we have a real low density footprint. And when you talk about luxury, it's the luxury of space or the luxury of time, the luxury of of being able to have that romantic dinner out on the beach. And that, by the way, we can set up for two people. Now there's an extra charge. So if somebody wanted to do a luxury pro uh, meal, perhaps a proposal out on the beach with rose petals all the way out in a, in a private uh, tented uh, table with champagne and lobster and all that, we can make those experiences happen. So it's not only about what's included, it's what we can do to make that a very unique experience for each individual. For us also, uh, spa and wellness and health and wellness are huge. So we have incredible state-of-the-art fitness centers and 
There's excellent instruction, the latest in equipment there. So those are some of the things, depending on what the, the guest really wants, we tailor, we can tailor make that experience for them. The basics are there at every one of our resort brands. And the basics are great food, great beverage, great service, room service, you know, all the things that you would expect. But we go above and beyond. And I think each of us on the call have a special way of doing that. No, and that's absolutely. But again, the, the only thing that I guess you have to charge for is, is spa services and maybe some of those extras you were talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that all-inclusive that includes spa services. I'm not sure if that's how, to, how, to, how we're going to do that. Uh, let's talk, Kathy, because uh, uh, you actually have two, two brands that, that really are in the, on the luck, luxury space. Obviously, LeBlanc, which I was lucky enough to stay at just before the pandemic really hit. Uh, and then I think it's the Grand, right? The uh, uh, in, in Palace, which uh, I, I wish I could have stayed at because uh, uh, although your Moon Palace was great, I, I was sort of spoiled at the Grand. Uh, so it's a little different. Uh, uh, but yeah, tell us about what's included uh, in both of those resorts. Sure. So I'm going to start with our adult only brand, which is LeBlanc Spa Resort. Um, we have a property both in Los Cabos and in Cancun. And much like everybody else that's been speaking today, uh, the food and beverage is extremely important. Um, our restaurants really, we, we source everything locally because we actually have our own kitchens where we actually bake all of our own bread. We make all of our own juice. It's distributed to all of our properties throughout the region. So that's a very big differentiator right there. And being a spa resort, of course, spa is extremely important and wellness. One thing I think that really does differentiate the LeBlanc brand is the fact that, yes, we have the butler service. So if you get there and you're tired and you're okay with somebody unpacking your luggage, they will absolutely unpack for you. They'll iron if your clothes look wrinkled. They'll provide aromatherapy. We even have um, soaps. So you can actually pick a soap and they'll come up. Looks like they're cutting cheese, but they'll hand carve soaps. Oh, and. Wow. And the staff is really a very big differentiator. If you look at all of our guests, you know, surveys, the one thing that resonates not only is the food and beverage and the dining and the premium alcohol, like our house champagne, for example, at LeBlanc is Moet. So it's really just a step above. And the fact that it's adult only, of course, spa, yeah. no. Spa treatments are additional, but um, our water journey area and just the relaxation rooms in the spa, there is no charge for that. Um, no, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So additionally, um, for example, in Cancun, we actually own a golf course at Moon Palace, which is a 27 hole Jack Nicklaus design course. So for our adults only, we do find a lot of couples or even girlfriend getaways, guy getaways. They'll take advantage of some really aggressive you know, golf pricing. So and even your food and beverage is included when you're playing golf. So moving on away from the adults only, um, you mentioned the Grand at Moon Palace. The Grand is a step above any other luxury, all-inclusive in its comp set. It's not only beautiful and larger than life, but we offer restaurants from Indian to Lebanese with belly dancers. Yes, with steakhouses and everything else, but we also offer a wide variety of entertainment. So there's shows and we even have a speakeasy called the library that if you don't know where it is, you'll walk right by it. It looks like a bookshelf. You open the door and you're in this fabulous speakeasy where we prepare some tremendous cocktails and it's a very cool vibe. Additionally, we accept families there, but sometimes you want to get away from those kids. So we have the playroom and wired teen lounge, which is state of the art. And then we have our adults only pool where we'll have gray goose parties, similar to Vegas style pool parties with cabanas and service. And it's just a really incredible experience. No, that's great, and and I, I experienced both those, and I think I think you had a few people from the World Travel and Tourism Council who found the speakeasy when they were down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, let me turn to the next question, and I'm going to start uh, uh, with you, Howard. Obviously, all inclusive resorts are concentrated right now in Mexico and the Caribbean. Do you think, given uh, actually your association with Hyatt, and I'll ask the other folks on the panel, is this a concept that? Is, can spread to other regions of the world. And I know John's going to talk about how Iberostar Star is, is elsewhere in the world. But is this a concept? Why, and why hasn't it spread more, more quickly? Well, I think there's a couple issues here. One, you probably know my background. I did work for another international all-inclusive resort company for many, many years with- Yeah, a little, a little one at the very beginning. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I heard of that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. And uh, I'd like to say I'm the missing link, the before and after, right? So uh, the- uh, 
But uh, there is a great appetite for all-inclusive resorts around the world. So this is not a, a new concept. Matter of fact, it was actually born overseas. But, you know, when you start to look at uh, our resorts and our company specifically, Playa, we're always looking to purposefully grow our portfolio. In, and it's a really big world out there. The appetite for uh, upmarket all-inclusive vacations is significant everywhere. It's not just in the Caribbean and Mexico, uh, but this is where we find ourselves operating today. That doesn't mean tomorrow, should the right opportunities occur, you know, you won't find us in the Maldives or perhaps in, in Turkey or in Greece or in the North Rim of Africa, uh, where resorts like all, where all-inclusive resort uh, vacation styles are, are quite prevalent in, in, all throughout Southeast Asia. So there's opportunity there as, and with our partners, both at Hilton and at Hyatt, um, they are very well entrenched in these markets. And, you know, we, we look at opportunities and we continue to do so. And when we find the right strategic fit at the right time, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see us entertain and, and, and be part of uh, all inclusives in that part of the world. No, absolutely. I do think there's potential there and we'll see how it develops. But John, the same question. Iberostar is, is really all over Europe and other parts of the world, South America. Uh, uh, why, why haven't we seen uh, a more outgrowth than, than in Mexico and the Caribbean right now? Yeah, no, I mean, we've had uh, with the success that we had in Mexico, we were able to all of our resorts that we have in Spain, being a Spanish company in Mallorca, we uh, we took right. It was about three years ago. We actually took the, um, the experience that we had from from the Caribbean and Mexico and the success. And really, it was a matter of the staff making sure that we work with the unions to understand that that, um, that, that the staff was even though that we were going to start including tips and things like that, that it was all going to they weren't going to lose money and everything was going to be great. And in fact, people love, you know, tipping even more to the staff if, uh, you know, and, and that's something that was really important for us in Europe to make sure that, that the, because we, you know, like uh, a lot of the folks on the panel have said, service is also part of the luxury experience, you know, remembering the customer's name and, um, and, and greeting them and unpacking their luggage and making martinis for them and drawing a bath and, and having rose petals and making a romantic setting. So in, in Europe, we had these, these, these resorts that we had had for about few, about, 20 years. And we said, you know, let's, we're going to refurbish them, but let's make them all inclusives. And we took four star hotels that we had, for example, the, the Playa, Playa de Muro village in, uh, in Alcudia in Mallorca is um, now government rated five star, all inclusive family resort that is um, amazing. And it's all inclusive. We've actually started having lots of travel advisors, um, especially prior to the pandemic, we're starting to send customers to us there in Spain. So we were, in the Canary Islands, of course, we have great uh, all-inclusive resorts. And now, basically, even with um, our expansion into Latin America, we're getting ready to open at the end of the year uh, in Aru uh, starting in Aruba, in, uh, in Lima, Peru, an area of Miraflores. And even though it's, you know, a city uh, destination, we believe we can actually make it an all-inclusive. And that's, um, and we're going to categorize it as an all-inclusive resort. Okay, so we're really good. excited about that. That, that's that's great. Uh, yeah. T tell me when you're going to make your Ibero Star Park uh, uh, property in New York all inclusive, and I'll I'll, I'll join you there. Uh, <laughs> well, it's interesting because there is a hotel Ibero Star Hotel. hotel. Now, Kathy, Kathy uh, uh, sort of the same question. I mean, Palace sort of started in Mexico. It expanded into the islands of the Caribbean. Uh, do they see the potential for go going beyond the region? Well, absolutely. Um, we originally started in Mexico, as you know, and we have properties throughout Mexico. As I said, from Cozumel to Isla Mujeres to Cabo and the Cancun area. And then we ventured into Jamaica with our Moon Palace brand and it's been extremely successful. Um, luxury family resort, also couples, you know, we get run the gamut in terms of who our client base is there. We're also currently under construction in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very exciting. That will open as a moon palace and also have the grand section there. So that's where we're going. We usually follow the air, so to speak, and we follow trends. But there is talk about expanding our brands elsewhere. Um, so I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot about that in the future. 
Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, Gary, uh, there's all, all of these rumors about where Sandals is going next. And you've, lar- <laughs> you've largely stayed in, on the, in the Caribbean islands, although I did hear rumors once that, that years ago, Butch was, you know, looking at property in Mexico. There's always like, yeah, he was here. Uh, it was like, where are you going next? So do, do you think there's a potential for Sandals and beaches to, yeah. to go beyond the Caribbean islands? We have a very bold and, and ambitious executive chairman. And uh, the fact that he's bold and ambitious, um, it could be, uh, you know, everything is at play. But the reality is we're a Caribbean company. We are right. Caribbean owned. We're a, we, were, we started in Jamaica and what we know is the Caribbean. And the Caribbean is our playground. And our commitment to the region, our commitment to the Caribbean is one that is of such that our focus right now is on how do we build out and expand throughout the Caribbean as a region. What are the possibilities beyond that? Great. But, you know, we have Curacao coming. We have St. Vincent coming. We have other resorts in Jamaica coming. And our 15,000 employees, how do we bring them back to work? They're all folks in the Caribbean that we have to take care of in our own playground. So, right. yes, there is always possibilities, but, but the Caribbean is our playground right now. <laughs> well, when, I, when I talk with Adam in a, in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll ask him to give me the big reveal about his next destination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, you're, uh, you know his father was always a great one for finding uh, other, other places and new places. Now, I, I want to go to start with John in terms of actually one of the reasons uh, why we're here is to talk to travel advisors about how they should sell your luxury all-inclusive products who should they target uh that's the question uh how should uh travel advisors sell the grand uh, who should they be targeting and how how should they pitch the sale john that's a great question and and what we want to do we really want to encourage the 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 travel advisors to experience our resorts and stay with us and and see what it's all about so they can go back and tell the story and and use social media to really encourage their customers to uh, to see what we have at the Grands. And you were talking about, everyone's been talking about different room categories and some of the inclusives that we have. We even created spa um, spa suites where we have spa treatments included in the room categories. So um, it's it's really, really important for the agents to, to experience it and uh, that way they can target it to the right customers. So I know you've done a lot of fam groups. I was with one of your fam groups, and it is good that you should get down. And all of, all of the folks on this panel, they have programs, in case you're wondering, that we're, you can visit their resorts and really get to know them very well. You've got to work a little. You've got to go around and experience everything. But it really are, these are great programs. And, Kathy, I want to go to you for a second. I mean, how should they target uh, customers? You said, uh, by and large, what we're dealing with. And, yes, there's some, obviously, the grand can, or is for families, so you do have that. But a lot of this is for couples, right? For sure, for sure. First of all, I think the industry as a whole has you know suffered greatly, and I do think the floodgates are open, and that's largely have opened, largely attributed to the dedication of the travel advisors. So I personally just want to thank everybody for the support. We've all been in this together, but I think what's important now, to your point, James, is really identifying where the good fit is for your clients. Right. So. Right. And I agree with what John had said. You have to experience resorts because you'll sell it best once you've been there. But let's say you can't. You can't travel right now. You're too busy because your phones are ringing off the hook. Really doing as much as you can do to educate yourself on the resorts. So, for example, and I'm going to go back to the LeBlanc brand, knowing that you have, you know, whether, and as I said, it's not only couples for LeBlanc. We get a ton of girlfriend getaways. I actually last year, pre-pandemic, took 14 of my girlfriends to LeBlanc in Cancun to celebrate my 21st birthday. And uh, we, no laughing, please. And, uh, you know, we had a- uh, No, I'm not laughing at the the girl's getaway. I wish I was there. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, we have couples, romantic, you know, dinners on the beach, things of that nature. But what I do find, I'm saying, and I don't know if any of the other people on the panel are experiencing it, I'm seeing the travel that's coming back, much higher demand in the luxury segment. I mean, that's what we're seeing. People are just spending a lot more money. So making sure you identify your client. Do they want to be in a, you know, a smaller resort versus a much larger resort, such as the Grand, which has families. But again, we get a ton of adults only there as well. Um, really making sure you know what your clients are looking for. Are they looking to go to a nightclub at night? Do they want to play golf? Um, do they want to sit quietly on the beach in a cabana and you know drink champagne all day? 
So the services, you know, you're going to get amazing food and beverage. You know, you're getting premium alcohol. You know, you're on a pristine beach or do you want to be around like activities around pools? And I think once you identify your client, putting the appropriate, you know, head in that bed really comes on the travel professional, which is why people use agents to begin with, because they want to know that they're actually getting what they're expecting. So our job is to exceed clients' expectations. I do think the travel advisors, the job is to really make sure you're educated on what all of us have to offer so that you can exceed your clients' expectations. And guess what? They're going to keep coming back to you. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. And uh, Gary, sort of the same question. And Sandals does, uh, uh, like all the others on this panel, that Sandals does a, a great job of educating travel advisors and having tremendous programs. But what's your best advice uh, especially in this day and age, and especially targeting luxury clientele uh, to stay at Sandals Resorts? Well, first of all, the travel advisor have to partner with a hotel company that supported them during the pandemic, period, end of story. Because we never left. We maintained our sales force right in place to make sure that whatever the travel advisor needed, that we were there to support them. Then you have to, because of that partnership, you have to now have education. You have to know what you're selling. If you don't know what you're selling, you're on the wrong path, going in the wrong direction. And then you have to have a brand. You have to work with a brand that you can trust. It is fundamental to be able to trust a brand as we move forward in this world. And just like we expect um, the consumer to trust the travel advisor, you also have to build out on all the elements of making sure that the, the strategy for trust, the, tra the strategy for being there for with a company that has always been there for you, that will make a huge difference. And then that education, experiencing the resort, I mean, that is, a, that is the icing on the cake. You, you can't sell something you haven't seen. So we encourage everybody to come down to the Caribbean and partner with us right throughout the Caribbean. That's what we want. Including Absolutely. you, Jim. You can come down too. Well, thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll be down there. We'll, we'll take a flight tomorrow. We got it. Uh, uh, Howard, uh, sort of same question. How, how should uh, travel agents be selling, uh, especially now uh, as we emerge from the pandemic? Pandemic, this luxury, all-inclusive product. Well, thanks a lot, Jim, for that question. I think a couple of things I do want to mention that because uh, it's come up so much from, uh, from my esteemed panelists here is that we do also, and all of our brands have the. Uh, adult only and all age welcome or family friendly resorts. So the, don't rule us out on the basis of that. We certainly have those. Uh, Zalara, for example, with Hyatt is adult only and our Ziva brand is uh, all age welcome or family friendly couples. A uh, couple of things I think agents really can take advantage of are their BDM sales forces. Uh, our sales team, our business development managers, directors, uh, they really do a great job and they'll come in and, you know, we're starting to make in-person sales calls again as we come out of the pandemic, a lot of fam activity to get folks down to see the hotels. And we really believe if you come see our hotels, you're going to fall in love with them like we do. And you're going to want to really preference them and, and recommend them to your clients going forward. The other thing that I think is really unique to us at, at Playa is that we're bringing over a hundred million consumers to the all-inclusive world through Hilton and Hyatt's loyalty programs. So these are these are uh, loyalty programs that the hoteliers have, the big brands have. And when a Hilton loyalist or a Hyatt loyalist sees that they have an all-inclusive opportunity within their brands to earn earn their points or sometimes even burn their points, and they can really take advantage of that. And it again helps the travel agency sell. And then furthermore. Uh, and, and I don't know if we're going to get to this or not, but we are one of the few, like of two, all-inclusive resorts that are part of really major upmarket hotel programs like the American Express. Most all-inclusives are not part of uh, the Amex Flying Hotel and Resort or Hotel Collection Program. We're there. Uh, we've got the Hyatt Privé program, which is really their, their highest end resorts catered to by an exclusive invitation only travel agent clientele can only sell the Privé product. Uh, and then we're with the Signature uh, Consortium Association. So with being with Signature, being with American Express, being with Privé, really that's where those are the customers that you need to send our way. And then with the Hilton and Hyatt affiliations, as I said, there's over 100 million consumers affiliated with those brands. 
Well, clearly, obviously, uh, Luxury All Inclusives are getting affiliated, as you say, with uh, these kind of brands, higher end brands throughout. Uh, I'm going to turn to the, the question of the day, even though I guess uh, yesterday, we, uh, as we talked today, uh, we just learned we don't have to wear masks if we're vaccinated. But we, I want to talk about how the pandemic has affected uh, your resorts and their operations. Uh, how has it maybe have changed your product, if at all? And, and what has changed, you know, for your customer, if at all? I'm going to start with you, Kathy, in terms of, and I, I did experience a, a little bit of the difference myself when I was down at Moon Palace, but uh, it is, it is, you know, and, and but it's not intrusive, I will say that, but talk a little bit about what, what the experience, how the experience is different now. Sure. I think now more than ever, um, there is obviously the desire to make sure if you're traveling somewhere that your safety is looked after. So when all of this started coming about and we were opening up travel again, we had to, as a company come up with some strategic procedures and we created Purely Palace and Purely LeBlanc, which was over 200 measures of control within the hotel environment to ensure the safety of our guests. So when you check into LeBlanc or you check into any of our palace products, the rooms are sealed. They've already been sanitized, cleaned. You're provided with your, a face mask in the room if you forgot one, which most people are certainly not forgetting them these days, but a fresh face mask, sanitizers, uh, social distancing. Right now in all of our public areas, guests are required to wear masks. Not all guests abide by that. We do our best. Um, things are changing daily. I mean, James, to your point, now if you're vaccinated, technically you don't have to wear a mask except on airplanes still and public transportation. So we want to make sure that guests are very comfortable when they come to the properties. Uh, we have a lot of alfresco dining options for those who really are not comfortable. But even within the restaurants, keeping spaces between tables and, you know, keeping limited occupancies in the restaurants is really first and foremost. And, you know, just even having the signage on the floors to encourage people to not be on top of each other. Look, after a few drinks and a speakeasy, I can't guarantee that everybody is going to abide by the rules. But I think us uh, um, as a hotel, you're being cognizant of guests, you know, concerns has made all the difference. And never mind the guests. What's really important at Palace and LeBlanc is our staff. Many of them have been with us for years and their family to us. So it's not just protecting our guests. Really important, very important is protecting our staff because they're part of the Palace family and LeBlanc family. So that's uh, you know equally important to us as a company. Absolutely, and that's that's. I, and I'm sure, uh, Gary. I'm sure you'll echo that. Uh, how is Sandals handling this whole pandemic situation? And uh, we're we're talking uh, like yesterday in Vegas, they just opened the casinos to full capacity. Uh, so uh, obviously, some of these rules are going to change. But how has Sandals been uh, ad adapting to the new environment? No, certainly the the health and safety of our staff and guests is very important, and it's I think it's very important to all of us on this panel. So I think that's one thing for sure that we all agree on. Um, we implemented the Sandals um, Platinum Protocols of Cleanliness. And really what that was designed to do is really an enhancement of all the, the cleaning measures that you are able to, 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 to adopt. And the governments of the, the regions, um, the government of the islands in the Caribbean, they have also, um, we have been working with their guidelines and we have been making sure that whatever the new policy is, and, and believe me, it, it ranges from island to island. I mean, yeah. every, every island is completely different, and, but they have one unique, um, unique formula, which is that you, 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 know, you have to wear masks in a public environment, et cetera. So we, we first of all, adapt the, the policies of the, the various governments, and we also take it a step further with our um, platinum protocols of cleanliness. And that is that, I believe, is making a difference. And, and funny enough, James, I just got back last night from Antigua, um, Sandals Antigua, which is our first resort that was open. And when I went down in May last year, in the middle of the pandemic, when that hotel opened, uh, reopened, and there was anxiety and there was, you know, a sense of nervousness, etc. I mean, what it is today, you see them still following the guidelines, following all of the elements of the protocols that exist. So, so I think it's now, I mean, I hate to say this, but I, I think it's a new norm, whatever the yeah. new norm is, you know, um, you wear a mask on the plane, you know, in the old days, you, you, when you're checking in, they ask if for smoking or non-smoking. Well, today you have to wear a mask and it is just what it is. And um, I think it is making a difference for all of us. 
Absolutely. And uh, uh, John, I've experienced some of your properties under the, the pandemic too. Uh, what, how does uh, Iberostar approach the whole uh, health and safety? So yeah, it's, it's, it's been evolving as everyone's been saying. We basically, the one we started was uh, we created a, uh, an, a medical board that um, had people that were experts in infectious disease and virologists that work closely with the World Health Organization and to really get to, to get tourism back on track, you know, on a worldwide level. And these gentlemen um, created this panel where we were able to come up with over 300 measures and a concept called How We Care. And then we had our BDMs out there doing webinars, constantly educating everybody in all these different protocols and, and all the way to give those reassurances to the, uh, to the to the travel advisors that they could give to their customers, you know, because that was really, really important. Let them know that um, they're going to feel they're going to be safe. We're going to um, take every precaution to make sure that they have a, a great experience. But at the same time, we don't want them to to miss out or have or feel like they've lost anything in the whole vacation experience. So and then we have, of course, our own um, sustainability program called the Wave of Change Movement. And that was really important for us as well, because we had to incorporate that into those 300 measures where, you know, even, to, you know, the type of cleaning products that we use had right. to be environmentally friendly. And as well as the uh, the, uh, the the F&B and everything, we had to make sure that we still stuck with our guidelines of, of working with the Marine Stewardship Council and having, uh, you know, working with suppliers that were doing things responsibly for the for the environment. But at the same time, you know, safety and uh, and, and taking precautions so that the folks did. And then now, you know, a year later, we, I saw, I'm seeing now, you know, one of the things that really um, separates us a lot is that we still have, um, you know, these amazing buffet experiences, which are more like a, you know, a, a food fair and, you know, just a, a huge variety for folks to choose from. You had some of that when we were at the coral level there on the beach in, uh, in, in, uh, in Punta Cana. And you saw the seafoods and the fresh crab and everything else. So, you know, you know, before everything was being served and now little by little folks are being able to, to serve themselves and things like that. And, and I think we're going to get back to a place to where, you know, it's going to be like the, the uh, even a better all inclusive experience because we've all learned from this, you know, and I believe that working with, uh, with, med with the medical board and, and, these, and hearing from the travel advisors of what customers are looking for has really, really helped us um, all up our game. No, absolutely. I think there are some bright, bright, some good things that came out of this. Although it's hard to hard to remember them sometimes. Uh, Howard, the same question: How is uh, 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 Playa and your all inclusive resorts, especially the upscale ones, Hyatt Ziva, Hyatt Solera? How are you approaching uh, the the you know how to operate in the in the pandemic? Well, as, again, I, I want to thank uh, all the colleagues on the panel. I think as a, as an industry, the hotel industry has done a remarkable job. Overall, uh, I think we took it to another level. Frankly, uh, Hyatt alone, again, one of the major international brands, along with Hilton, and you know they they've gone out and they've partnered with medical experts and the, all of the the uh, chemical companies and providers to to make it possible to have a very very safe and fun experience. Uh, Playa, we have our Playa Safe Stay program. There's a great video on our website about that that folks who are concerned can really see all the extra steps that we've taken to ensure a fun experience. I think the other thing though, that on the, on the plus side, you start to talk about the plus side, folks really understood the importance of an all-inclusive is that when you come to the property, the consistency and the cleanliness and the quality across, in some cases in our, in our instance, over a dozen hotel restaurants and lounges and bars, they're all part of that Playa Safe State protocol. So whether it's your room, a restaurant, a lounge, a golf cart, a chase at the pool or the beach, every single one of those things are subject to the to really intense protocol. So staying at an all-inclusive was really a, a very safe uh, experience and a consistent experience that I think customers had a chance to, to understand better what it means and the convenience and the luxury of having that peace of mind going forward. Uh, everything was ready to go. As far as customers, you know, one of the things we talk about is that it's a customer base changed at all. And uh, we did see early on uh, in the pandemic that we skewed a bit younger than we would typically skew uh, our 18 to 30 year olds, which is not a huge part of the pie for us, uh, increased a little bit. And we saw that mid 
uh, that mid market, if you will, 30 to 50, diminished just a little bit. But now with vaccinations increasing, uh, we're seeing a return to our more normal, if you will, uh, uh, demographic. And, uh, and the only other thing that we're really, I think all of us here on the panel are waiting for, it, are really are, we're waiting for Canada and Europe to open. Right, because right. as much as we all source a lot of our business from North America, uh, the rest of the world does contribute you know, to our business. And we, we miss that. And I think some of our, our guests miss that international flavor too when when you come into a resort it's great that everybody's american swell you're american i'm american fun to be american but it's great to also have folks in from italy and france and germany and the uk and asia you know really that's what traveling is is all about is different cultures and different people so we sure miss our canadian and european and asian guests and look forward to welcoming them back soon as well Absolutely. I would amend to that. All right. Well, we've reached kind of the end, end of this panel. I, I want to thank you all, but I do want to give you a chance for some brief closing thoughts and what you want to tell travel advisors in addition to what we haven't already said. Uh, Ka- Kathy, uh, we'll start with you. Perfect. Thanks, James. Um, first of all, it's a pleasure being a part of this panel and thanks to everybody else who was a part of it. I learned a lot from it as well. One thing I do want to add that um, right now, while requirements still are such that Americans have to prove that they have a negative rapid test upon entry into the country, something that we have done, which I did want to mention because I think it's important for travel advisors to know, is that we provide free antigen testing at the resort prior to checkout. So we make it very easy and very stress-free. It's done directly on site, very well handled, I might add, and it's complimentary. And that's gonna continue as long as the requirements are such that you need to have that. So that's something also which is important for clients to know because I think there was a lot of stress when people said, oh no, now we have to have a negative test. So I think right now, the main thing is to continue encouraging your clients to travel because this is the basis of our industry. And I honestly feel, I see it already, the floodgates, as I said earlier, are opening. So really just a huge shout out to all the travel professionals that have supported us. Again, I think it was Howard that said, or somebody on the panel said, it's important to partner with hotel companies that you trust. Um, Our BDMs, we have over 14 throughout the States and in Canada are there to provide further detail. If you don't know your BDM, please, by all means, make sure you do. They're a wealth of information, including sharing all the protocols and also giving you collateral to share with your clients to close a sale. So in closing, I just want to thank everybody and thank the fellow panelists and thank you, James. Okay. Well, thank you, Kathy. Although I, I was t- I was telling John when I was down in the DR, I, I tried to bribe him to g- get me a positive antigen test so I could <laughs> say uh, you yeah. know, I, I, which is some of you have programs where you're allowed to, to stay. And I'm like, wait a minute, what am I thinking of? It, it, we, I think we, actually, we allow if, if a guest should test positive, we put them up for 14 days or until they test negative again um, at our cost. So That's, that is I know. I, you're leaving an opening there. I don't know. This is a this is another reason I can work from anywhere. So uh, let's 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 <laughs> look at that, that advantage too. Uh, Gary, Gary, same question. Any any closing thoughts for our travel advisors from from you and Sandals? No, just really to thank them, thank them for their support, thank all the travel advisors for everything that you do with us every single day. Our incredible team of business development managers led by with Garth Laird as our vice president of sales and of course the regional directors right throughout the US and the BDMs right throughout every state in every region. We want, we want you to know that we're there to support you. We're there to help you to build back your business. And the one commitment that we've made is that we never left you during this pandemic and we'll be here to make sure that we're p- working together to increase your sales and to build your business moving forward. But, you know, we're in this together and we're making the steps to make sure that we protect the travel industry at large. That's wonderful. Thank you, Gary. And uh, Howard, any closing thoughts for travel advisors from you? Absolutely, uh, James. Uh, give me an opportunity. I'm always going to take it. Uh, the uh, for, I do want to say that we have also the uh, antigen testing that we provide. That, that was something we did very early on as well, and, and it really made a big difference. Uh, the big advice I can give to travel agents, I think, and uh, those of you who know me know my wife and I owned retail travel agencies for a really long time, and we sold all, all manner of travel. And the thing with all inclusives, uh, we sometimes say we fight our shadow, which is the, the, what memories past of all inclusives used to be. And for upmarket travel advisors, it really is a, a brave new world out there. 
Uh, we've done incredible things to up our game and to really compete with the best resort experiences uh, anywhere. Uh, and I think for travel advisors, I'd like them all to remember one thought, and that is to sell without caveat. You know, we used to say many years ago, you go to the all-inclusive, no, the dinner was good for an all-inclusive, or the drinks were okay yeah, that was, that was for the all-inclusive. All there was always this caveat that you put in there. Uh, today, I would encourage and I would really ask and beseech our advisors to pull that out of their vernacular and to say, it's a really great vacation experience. It's an incredibly high quality experience. It's a high value experience. And whether it's all inclusive or EP, you're not gonna have a better time anywhere. These are really first rate, incredible five-star resorts. Come experience, see for yourself, and you'll, and, and you'll see that all of us on this panel have a great offering to provide and that we've all upped our game. And of course, here at Playa Resorts, we like to think we've done a little bit more, but uh, come on down and see for yourselves. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, well, definitely you mentioned the food, which actually gets me in trouble sometimes because I, all of you have do have wonderful food now. And yeah, it, you're right. It used to be like the food was okay for an all-inclusive, but you can't say that anymore with uh, the luxury all-inclusives. Uh, John, any closing thoughts for our travel advisors out there uh, from you? Yes, absolutely. Again, th everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to I have learned a lot as well, like you said, Kathy, from my esteemed colleagues on here. So it was really, really great to be on here with everyone. I believe one of the messages that I'd like to say to the advisors is that they have an amazing opportunity now to reemerge and to really take the, uh, the whole vacation experience and educate themselves even further so that they can really, really sell now to customers. Because I believe customers are going to rely even more than ever before on the travel advisor because, you know, the, the vacation experience is not a commodity. It is an experience. It's something that people save up their money for. It's something that people want to continue to spend more and more money, as, as everyone's been saying. In fact, our grand products are some of the best. Actually, our grand paraiso here in Mexico is our number one seller right now coming out of, you know, and, and that's that's amazing to see that. Like uh, I believe as Kathy was saying that, that also the customers are looking for that uh, upper uh, echelon experience. And so um, I believe now more than ever, the travel advisor can be more relevant, can be a stronger voice for all of us, and a, even a, a, and a great salesperson for us as well. So, you know, we've got great business development managers. We've got a great, great website with all of our webinars that have been re-recorded so they can educate themselves even further. And kind of, we've also encouraged everyone to come experience our resorts and, uh, you know, and take advantage of the, uh, the programs that we have and the incentives that we all have. Not just the one that you like, James, which is the 14 nights uh, extension <laughs> staying at our <laughs> with travel at ease at the Iberia stars. And I, you know, I don't know if everyone knows this, but you know, the Dominican Republic, we've, they vaccinated all the staff at all the resorts. The government did that. And I believe that, um, that advisors also need to know that the, uh, the governments and the different destinations where we, uh, where we operate uh, are really, really having a big hand in this and in recovery. So, again, I want to thank the travel advisors because without them, we wouldn't have been able to open up our resorts. They, they were the key. To, they came down and educated themselves and gave them. They said to their customers, hey, I've been there and, you know, you're going to love it. It's going to be even better than it was before. And, uh, and, and you have nothing to worry about. And that's and I believe that the reassurance was really, really important and it gave them an opportunity. So, again, thank you. Thank you again, James. Thanks, to everybody, for, uh, for this amazing time together. Well, on that note, John, thank you very much. And I want to thank all of you, all four of you. Uh, it's been a really great panel uh, to really highlight uh, a category that's been growing for a few years, but we're trying to really put the spotlight on uh, your luxury all-inclusive products because I do think you are at levels equal to any luxury resort out there, but it is all-inclusive. It's not EP. And uh, you have some amazing products and some amazing products for you, uh, our travel advisor viewers out there to sell. So please look at, at all these different products. Uh, find, find the one that works best for your, your customer. 
uh, and you'll have different customers who want different needs. And you're going to find out that these really are super, super and very sellable and very profitable products for you to sell. And on that note, I also want to encourage you uh, to visit the exhibition floor uh, we have uh, here, as well as all the panels. We have a lot of great suppliers who have booths there, and you can find out more about companies there. And then I'd like you to also consider looking at all the other panels and speakers we have, because this is really a super uh, uh, program of luxury ex executives, people of specialists in luxury travel. And I think you can learn something great from them. We have hoteliers, we have cruise lines, we have tour operators, we have travel advisors. Uh, so please uh, take a look at that. And again, thank you very much. I'm James Schillinglaw for Virtual Vacation Events. Music